folks, welcome to the next episode of Differential Equations. I'm your host Rifat Bari, Harvard Exoplanet Researcher, Perfect ACT Scorer, and I have a perfect GPA at the City College of New York where I'm studying physics for my bachelors. Today we're going to discover the escape velocity equation from differential equations alone. In the past videos we've covered separable differential equations, homogeneous differential equations, linear exponential, all of those differential equations. Today we're going to see an actual application of uh, differential equations in the real world. How rocket scientists use differential equations to derive the formula for escape velocity. What initial velocity you need to give to a rocket so that it can achieve uh, a specific altitude. Alright folks, let's hit the books and the math. So today we're going to be doing something very exciting. We're going to derive the equation for escape velocity from very basic math. So let's get started with the Earth. So I have the Earth and I have a rocket that's trying to escape it. So here's my rocket. Here's my rocket that's trying to escape the Earth. And this rocket has a bunch of stuff going on. First of all, it has a velocity to the right. Okay, so that velocity is V naught and it's taking the rocket away from the Earth. But on the other hand, it has a force that's trying to keep the rocket earthbound. And what is that force? Well, that's the force of gravity. And that's Fg, right? Pulling the rocket to its home planet, trying to keep it earthbound. Well, here's a few variables we have to assign from the get-go. First of all, here's the center of the Earth. Uh, why is that important? Why does that matter? Because gravity pulls the rocket to, to the core of the Earth. And so we have to measure the distance of the rocket from the core of the Earth. So let's call this radius R for the Earth and let's say the distance from the surface of the Earth to our rocket let's call this distance here x. So as of right now our rocket is R plus x meters away from the surface of the Earth, from the core of the Earth. So now what can we do? Well first let's determine what the force acting on our rocket is. What is the net force? The net force is just going to be gravity but what is that force? Well, if our rocket was on the surface of the Earth, well, that would just be its weight, right? That would be uh, the, the force of gravity pulling on it would just be its weight. It's mass times the gravitational acceleration. But the problem is the gravitational acceleration does not remain constant as you go up, right? Obviously, it decreases. So we can no longer use this formula. Instead, we have to make some adjustments. First thing I want to do is just uh, very minor and that's just a change of sign because gravity is going to be pulling to the left and I just want to keep that as our convention here that any forces to the left will be negative and any forces to the right will be positive. So now what other adjustments are we going to make to this, uh, to this gravity right here? First thing you should notice is that it has to somehow depend on the distance we are away from the Earth. In fact it has to depend by an inverse square law, right? So since gravity decreases by an inverse square law, we're going to divide this minus mg, I'm going to make it smaller here, we're going to divide this minus mg by the distance the rocket is away from the Earth, squared. But if you check your units here using dimensional analysis, if you make the rocket go to the surface of the Earth by making x equal 0, well you're going to have r, r squared on the bottom. That doesn't make any sense. So you have to balance it out with an R squared on the top. And so here's the force of gravity we're going to be using and now we can get down to business. So now that we have the force of gravity acting on our rocket, we also have the net force. This is the net force acting on our rocket. So Newton's second law tells us that the net force is equal to the mass of the rocket times its acceleration and that's equal to minus mg R squared over x plus R squared. Okay, and now, simple thing, we're just going to cancel out the masses, and now what can we do? Well, we can rewrite our acceleration in a very basic calculus, rewrite A as the change of velocity, dv dt. And on the right hand side, what do we have? We have minus g r squared over x plus r squared. Now, if you can tell, we're juggling a lot of variables here, right? We have the velocity, we have the radius of our planet, we have the distance from the surface, we have the gravitational constant. So we have a lot of things going on here. So 
this is actually going to be a hassle if we integrate with respect to t. So to make sure we keep ourselves to a hassle minimum, I'm going to rewrite dv dt in terms of not time but position. And so how can we do that? Well, that's just simply the chain rule. We know that dv dt is simply dv dx times dx dt. And of course, hopefully you know what dx dt is. That's just your velocity. Right, so that's going to be v dv dt. And so now we can replace this left-hand side with what? I'm going to replace this left-hand side with v dv dt is equal to minus g r squared over x plus r squared. Okay, so now you're thinking, why did he do this? Is it to torture me? Well, that's part of it, but the other part is to make this a separable differential equation. Now, all I have to do is, oh, whoops, this should be dv dx. This should be dx here, right? This should be dv dx over here. This should be dv dx over here. Because the whole point of, of using the chain rule was to rewrite this dv dt in terms of not time, but position. Okay. So now, since this is a separable differential equation, I can capitalize on that. I'm going to integrate both sides uh, with respect to x. So let's go ahead and do that. Integrate the left-hand side, v dv dx with respect to x. And integrate the right-hand side. Uh, integrate the right-hand side minus gr squared over x plus r squared with respect to x. Okay, so now, what can we do? Well. We have some simple math going on here. dx and dx cancel out. I'm going to end up with v squared over 2 on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, what do I have? I have minus gr. What a mess. Well, first of all, this is not as mess as much of a mess as it may seem. This is simply a constant. So we're going to bring it out over here to the outside. Minus gr squared. And then we're going to integrate 1 over x plus r squared with respect to x. Now, you might be thinking, how am I going to integrate this mess? Well, it's just simple u sub, right? Since you have a constant add, added to the x, well, this is just going to be du is equal to dx. And if you need me to write that out, well, let's go ahead and do it. We have that u is equal to x plus r, so that du is equal to dx. And so now I can just rewrite this thing as u to the minus 2, right? So I'm going to end up with v squared over 2 is equal to minus gr squared times the integral of u to the minus 2 du, right? Because since du is equal to dx. And so we're going to have v squared over, oh, don't forget your plus c. I almost forgot it. So v squared over 2 is equal to minus gr squared times minus u to the minus 1 plus c. And so do you recall what we substituted in for u? Well, u was simply what? Actually, I don't remember either. u was x plus r. So this is going to be minus gr squared times minus 1 over x plus r plus my constant, which we will determine using the initial conditions. And so now I'm going to rewrite this as v squared over 2 is equal to gr squared over x plus r plus c. Now what is c? Well, remember when the rocket is at the surface of the Earth, we give it that initial velocity of v naught, right? So then if x is 0, if x goes to 0, then v should go to v0. So this is going to become no more than v0 squared over 2 minus gr squared over r is equal to our c. And so c is no more than v0 squared over 2 minus gr. And so now I can substitute this in for c into this little equation, right? So for c, what am I going to have? Instead of c, I can rewrite this as v squared over 2 is equal to g r squared over x plus r, uh, x plus, r plus, plus v naught squared over 2, v naught squared over 2 minus g r, minus g r. So now I have v squared over 2, uh, I have my velocity in terms of my position, right? In terms of my distance from the Earth's surface. Okay, so how does that help me? Well, now I can just solve for my velocity, right? So I can say that v squared is equal to, multiply everything by 2, I end up with, in fact, I can just solve for v right away. v is going to be what? v is going to be 
Uh, let's multiply this by 2. So I have V, v naught squared minus 2GR and plus, uh, that should be capital R, plus 2GR squared over X plus R. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is not the escape velocity, but it is a step close, right? It, this is getting us where we want. This is one step in getting to the formula for escape velocity. This here is no more than my velocity in terms of what? In terms of my distance from the Earth, Earth's surface, not the core. This, that's this x. And so now what can I do? I can, I know that when I launch the rocket, with some escape velocity. It's going to head out far, 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 and then if I launch it with just the right speed, with just the right initial velocity, it's gonna end up with zero meters per second at the end. So it's gonna have just enough velocity to get just far enough so that its velocity is nothing by the time it's, it's achieved its maximum altitude. So now what can I do? I can solve for that maximum altitude by, oh, whoops by setting my velocity, my final velocity to zero and setting my, my uh, distance from the Earth's surface to the maximum altitude, which I will call A sub max, okay? This is really where the business gets done. So I'm going to have zero is equal to the square root of V naught squared minus two G R plus two G R squared over, over uh, A max, A sub max, plus r. Okay, and so now I'm going to solve for a sub max. Uh, squaring both sides and bringing some terms over, I have d 2gr minus v naught squared is equal to 2gr squared over a max, which is my maximum altitude, plus r. So let's, let me bring this over here so this doesn't get messy. Okay, so what did I do? All I did was square both sides and I brought 2gr to this term, hence its positiveness, v naught squared to the other term, to, to the left-hand side, hence its negative sign, uh, and then I had this fractional term left over on the right-hand side. And so now I can just finish this off, solving for a max. So let's, uh, let's do, the, do the math here. So this is just simple basic algebra. So a max plus r is going to be 2g r squared over 2g r minus v naught squared and so now if I just subtract r from both sides I end up with my maximum altitude uh, if I apply some initial velocity v naught so then I'm going to have 2g r squared over 2g r minus v naught squared minus that r from the from this side right so minus r but I want to put a common denominator right so I can simplify this so I'm gonna have times 2gr minus v naught squared over 2gr minus v naught squared. So this is going to become what? Let's simplify this out. My maximum altitude is going to be 2gr squared minus 2gr squared plus v naught squared r all over 2gr minus v naught squared. And so if you can see over here, I have these two terms cancel out and I'm left with none other than my altitude, my maximum altitude in terms of my initial velocity that I supply to my rocket is going to be given by v naught squared uh, times r over 2g, did I write 2g, okay, 2gr minus v naught squared, okay, so now we are there, we are there, this is the maximum altitude, that's, that's, we're halfway there, and so now we're, we're going to finish off this 2D force of differential equations by solving for V0, which is that escape velocity. That's what we want to know. If I want to send my rocket to this far away, what's the velocity I need to give to it? So let's solve for V0 here. I'm going to have, uh, just cross multiplying here, what do I get? Let's see, I get 2GR minus V0 squared is equal to V0 squared R over my maximum altitude. Okay, and multiplying by 1 over v naught squared on both sides, I have 2gr minus v naught squared over v naught uh, is equal to r over the maximum altitude. And so now this is simple, very basic math. All I have to do is isolate v naught squared. So I have 
minus 1 is equal to r over my maximum altitude. Add that one term to both sides. So I'm left with 2gr over v naught squared is equal to r over my maximum altitude plus 1. And so now, if I go ahead and simplify my right hand side, I'm left with 2gr over v naught squared is equal to r plus my maximum altitude over my maximum altitude, a sub max. Okay, hopefully you can see that, great. And so now, this is very easy. I just have to multiply these two, divide by this guy to get v naught squared. So v naught squared is going to be none other than these two divided by this. So uh, 2gr times this, a max, divided by a max plus r. And so now if I just divide, if I just square root both sides, I'll get v naught, which is the initial velocity that I have to supply to the rocket, the escape velocity, or almost, uh, 2gr a max over a max plus r. And now look what happens, look what happens as I take the limit as my maximum altitude approaches infinity of v naught. And what is v naught? Well, I can write the limit as my max altitude approaches infinity of this term over here 2 g r a max over a max plus r a max plus r and so what's what's going to happen here well this term is going to approach z is going to approach not zero but one because the degrees are the same on the top and bottom right so this this thing over here this thing over here is going to approach one and so what am i left with for my uh, for my escape velocity, well, I'm left with the square root of 2 g r. And that is the equation for escape velocity. That's it. That was uh, very simple. Uh, all we had to do was some simple addition and subtraction. And we got the formula for escape velocity. So, folks, thanks for watching this episode. We'll check you out next time. The ambition plus MKO plus scaffolding equals learning. Excuse me. We believe anyone can learn anything. That's why our motto is memorization is a crime. And that's why we partnered with Brilliant. Brilliant transforms math and science into hands-on activities so that you too can understand everything from first grade math to E equals MC squared. Barry Science Lab and Brilliant is your MKO and will give you the scaffolding to expand your ZPD until you become the next Sir Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein. Visit brilliant.org slash Barry Science Lab today. And the first 50 of you to use that link will get a 20% discount on the Brilliant annual subscription. Don't, Don't forget, forget that you too can, can become, become the, the next Einstein. Einstein. So, so let's, let's fall in love with math and science. Math and science.